<laughs> um, I actually have to go to sleep watching forensic files just to just to have another voice in my head, um, just to have something else going on to wind down again. Sure, nice comic murder before bed. <laughs> you know, it's funny. The um the voiceover for forensic files is actually very sato voice. So I, I know it sounds odd, but it it it's not that the murder is coming. And some of them, some of them are are too disturbing. And I, I do actually have to turn it off, especially if it involves children or something like that. Um, but um, but it's it's strange how sato voice and calming. The voiceover is for Forensic Files, that show in particular. So um, I know I sound very bizarre, but um, I actually, uh, some of our best friends, we were talking the other day and they're like, me too. And we're like, well, I think that's why we're very good friends, that we're strange in the same way. So it, uh, it, it works. Well, it doesn't sound strange to me. I love a good horror story right before bed. But I imagine <laughs> that, um, that's almost research, right? For when you're going to write your next thriller. Uh, actually, one of my one of my stories disappeared did come from or the, the kernel of the story came to me from a forensic files episode. Um, the uh, the episode involved a, a boy who was awakened in the night by a sound um, and um, was told that his mother, you know, basically went went missing um, and um he heard something that made him think that maybe there was more to that story. And I thought, well, my, oh my God, what must it be like to be that boy who heard something and doesn't know what to believe, doesn't know what to believe about his father, doesn't know what to believe about the night that his mother disappeared, that he never saw her again. And I, I couldn't help, my writer brain just was engaged and I couldn't help but take it from there and write a book called Disappeared, at which you see in the screen. Um, about what it must be like to be that boy and and um and in my book to have um a sister to well in his mind to protect in her mind I mean she's her own character it's told from both of their points of view and one very much internalizes things and one very much externalizes things um and uh, and how they both deal with this but also investigate what happens um in this household of now one parent and what happens if that parent is responsible and they are and what happens if they're living with a killer and and i i just had to write this young adult suspense novel because i was so um wrapped up in the mindset of what it must be like to be this boy um so actually one of my novels did come from watching forensic files um so you know it's odd where we get inspiration and obviously my my book diverged entirely from the story I actually um was very careful not to learn more about you know, that story while I was writing it. I've since learned a lot more about that story, which is fascinating. It's a fascinating story. Um, but um, anyway, uh, hopefully my book is fascinating as well, but it, uh, both of the stories are, are very interesting, but the psychology of it is what was so interesting to me. And the book is Disappear by Lucine Driver, our diver, uh, who uh, any, any esteemed audience uh, who's listening to us can check the show notes or pull it up uh, while, while we're talking. So um, with an idea like that, when, it, when, it, when inspiration comes to you, how much do you have? Do you have the whole story at once? Do you have just a little bit of it? What, what, what starts you off on your journey? Um, usually it starts with characters and just like it did with Disappeared, um, me thinking, what must it be like to be this boy? Um, and then I build usually uh, a story around it. Um, and that's, it, it, again, it's usually me um, with a character and um, a, a situation that will most challenge this character. Um, it, it's very rare that it starts with a concept first, but um, that's what happened with the Countdown Club, actually. Um, it started to meet with a, a concept in that situation of um, what happens um, if you come into school or, or in that case it was school um, and you get a note five days to die. Um, in this case it's several kids um, who get a note five days to die, seven days to die, 11 days to die. Each, each child, uh, each, each teen, it's not, it's not children, well their teens are children, but you know it, they have um, basically expiration dates. They find notes with expiration dates and they're, they're very different kids. Some know each other, some don't, but um, all end up coming together to um, find out um, who is sending these notes and what's happening, especially after um, one 
uh, kid, um, one uh, of the kids who received a note, their house burns down um, with, um, with him and his mother inside, which I know is, is horrible, but there's, there's a lot to the story. Um, and uh, it's, um, I, I know it's teen suspense. So, you know, it, it, it's, it's pretty intense, but it is also um, to me, again, it's about these teens in this situation and um, and what these very different kids will do. And um, and when it starts with the situation, to me, the next question is who um, is gonna be most challenged by the situation? And I, again, chose two um, main points of view to tell the story. And one is Jack, who um, has a very challenging home life. He um, which I don't want to get too much into. I, I, I hope people will go pick up the story, but his, his um, brother is very, very sick and he um, is, has got a, a pretty abusive home life, but he cannot leave because he cannot leave his brother behind and he cannot leave his brother alone and he can't let anybody in on what's happening. So even he, he doesn't even want to reveal to anybody that he's got a note. He doesn't want to... Uh, join with any of the other kids to, to talk about what's going on because, you know, he does not want to talk. He does not want to talk about anything. He doesn't want to let anybody in. Um, it's just fine if people think he is a, an ass because um, that means nobody wants to get to know him. Nobody wants to get close to him. Nobody wants, nobody can possibly find out what's going on, send child services, get, you know, separate him and his brother, anything. Um, and, and so he's a very, very real um, character. Um, and there's things I want to talk about with that character about people not seeing what they don't want to see, not asking, not telling, that various things that I, I want to deal with with that character. And that, that's another important thing with stories to me is things that I want to talk about with people, with society, with characters. Um, anyway, the other one is more of a Pollyanna. She's very much more of a, um, she, she wants to see the beauty in the world. And so that's what she sees. And she, she, she's almost the antithesis to him not in a bad way, just in a, she's, um, she's artistic, she sees the beauty and um, she's being forced to see an ugly side of the world that she's not really confronted before. Um, and there are other characters involved as well um, that all have received notes, we're all very different types. And um, I just, um, and there's more going on to the story. I'm only really telling you these two points of view. There's, there's obviously more going on. Um, because there's something behind the notes um, that you reveal. And, and that's something I like about stories too, that are built like onions with layers and, and things that you peel back, whether it's adult suspense, whether it's young adult suspense. Um, I really like things where you, um, you might think you know, but do you really? And, and that you might find um, other angles, other elements as you're, as you're going through the story.